Hello everybody, welcome back. This is week 15 of the 51 Yarns Spin Along and this is Tweed Week. I'm going to continue saying Tweed in lots of interesting ways throughout this podcast because I quite like the word, I think it's quite nice to pronounce Tweed, 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 Tweed. I've also gone slightly insane over the last week or so. <laughs> I'll explain more in a moment. Anyway, um, in the meantime, if you are new to this channel and to this series of videos, this is a series that I do every week, which corresponds with the 51 Yarns Spin Along, which is run by Ply Magazine. It coincides with their book, which is called 51 Yarns to Spin Before You Cast Off. Um, I'm not affiliated with Ply Magazine or sponsored by them in any way, shape or form. It's just something I find useful as a resource. If you would like to join in the spin along, all you have to do is to post a photo of what you have spun that corresponds with that week's topic. Post it onto Instagram, Facebook or Ravelry with the relevant hashtags. So um, 51 yarns and ply magazine and hand spun yarn, I think is also one of the requirements. And you stand the chance to win a year subscription to ply magazine, which is very cool. Anyway, this week was tweed week. And I should probably apologise that I'm actually filming this on the Wednesday after Tweed Week finished. <laughs> the reason for that is that it has been really, really hot in the UK for the last three weeks, four weeks or so. And being British, you know, we complain about the weather all the time and we complain that it's too cold and too wet and too windy. And then when we do get some sunshine, we can't handle it. The reason we can't handle it is because our houses are generally not built with air conditioning. So there is, uh, there's no respite from it. It's not like you go outside and you've got lovely sunshine and then you can come inside and get cool. No, that does not happen. Especially in my house, because pretty much all of my house faces west. <laughs> there's like one window that faces any other direction than west. So consequently, my house is like an oven from about one o'clock onwards. So I had been waiting to have a morning available to film this episode. And this is the first morning that I had available. So apologies for that. But honestly, I did try shooting an episode late at night. No, not good. I just rambled, couldn't think about what I was trying to say. It was pointless. So I stopped. <laughs> So anyway, on we go with what I did during Tweed Week. So when it comes to Tweed, I always think of Tweed as being um, to do with colour and texture. And it's very much a woolen themed yarn. So both woolen spun and also wool as a, a kind of ingredient of that yarn. Tweed technically is a fabric. So there was some debate as to whether tweed could actually be a yarn, but I think we can safely say that there are commercial brands of yarn that call things tweed when it's kind of um, one solid colour, but then with inclusions of other colours. So that's kind of the theme that I went with. If you're going to try and create a tweed yarn, generally anything that has inclusions in it, so uh, chunks of something tends to work a lot better if it's woolen spun than worsted spun. So I knew I was going to woolen spin it and I used my hand cards to prepare a couple of different options. So one of those included this. I think you might know me well enough by now if you have watched any of the rest of the series uh, to know that Orange isn't generally a colour that features heavily in my wardrobe or in my stash. This is really quite bright orange and it's baby alpaca. I didn't order it. What happened was I placed an order and white baby alpaca has a very similar product code to orange baby alpaca on a particular website. So there was a packing error. They sent me bright orange baby alpaca and the order that I put in was a whole load of fibre for dyeing. So it was like white everything, 
apart from this bright orange baby alpaca. <laughs> so I opened the box and I was kind of like, hmm, I'm pretty sure I didn't order that. I did go and check and just make sure that I hadn't accidentally ordered the wrong colour. Um, but no, I hadn't. It was a packing error. I called them. They didn't want the orange back. Um, so they just sent me out a white version instead. But it's meant that for years I've had this orange baby alpaca in my stash and been wondering what to do with it. So I figured I would try and incorporate that in some way in the Tweed Week. I also had some mill rejects which have been donated by a friend and they are some beautiful subtle colours. So this is carded roving and with this one it's mostly blue but you can see that there are little specks of yellow and there are some greens in there and some light blues, dark blues all sorts of bits and bobs going on in there. I also had some green of the same fibre, so again there's some little bits of bright yellows, um, again some blue, light greens, dark greens and so on. And then there was also some purple, there's actually two different kinds of purple. Um, the darker purple has uh, lots of kind of clarity colours in there as well. So I had all of that. And then in order to, to do some demonstrations in this episode, I've also picked out some other bits and pieces. So I've got some packs of sari silk. Um, you might remember these. I got these at Wonderwool from uh, Wingham's. They're just little sample packs. And I thought they would be useful for blending. So they may feature in this episode. I've also got some of my hand-dyed fibres in colourways that didn't necessarily go how I expected them to. This one was definitely a little bit brighter green and blue than I was anticipating. And I also have some neps, which um, I keep meaning to dye some of these in lots of different colours so that I've got a few that I can just kind of chuck into bats but currently they're all still white but you can actually just get bags of these wool neps and I've also just got a few little solid bits of fibre there as well I think these I blended with combs if I remember rightly yeah looks like they came off combs and that would have been like red and yellow blended and then I've got uh, blue and yellow blended so that it's green so I've got a few little samples of those so we'll play with all of that stuff in a moment but I just wanted to show you the things that I actually ended up spinning during tweed week the first was something that I created from that orange alpaca so that was um, this orange baby alpaca carded with some of the blue of the um, mill reject but the one that was really kind of successful and inspiring to me was actually just from the mill reject and this is the darker purple and I love it because it's got all this really textural stuff going on I just spun it woolen two ply I did try a three ply sample as well, which is this one. But as soon as I knitted with the two ply version, I was just like, yep, yeah, that's fine. That's what I'm gonna do for the rest of uh, Tweed Week. One little extra tip, cause I realized that I hadn't actually talked about this before. I don't think when I do swatches, I use the Isolde method of figuring out what size needles you knitted them on. She does a yarn over for each full millimeter. And then for each quarter millimetre, she does a purl stitch. So I know that I did this on three yarn overs and two purl stitches, so three and a half mil needles. I also managed to spin up um, this one, which is from the, the first of two plies from the green. So that one's looking pretty good as well. So that was what I actually spun during Tweed Week, but I wanted to show you 
a little demonstration of what I did to get to that point. First of all, it should probably be noted that if you're planning to spin a tweed yarn, then in general, personally, I would want to stick to the traditional tweed colours, so things like browns and greens and greys, um, and to a certain extent kind of purples and, and lighter pinky colours. However, what I'm going to demonstrate today is going to be a little bit more kind of out there just because it's going to be a bit easier to see on screen. This is going to need blending so I'm using my hand cards. These are Ashford 72 point cards. They're the, um, the curved back ones. I should really try some straight back carders because I've never really figured out whether I prefer straight back or curved back carders but this is what I have so this is what I'm using. You could also use a blending board, you could use drum carder. The winner of this week's competition was somebody who had none of those tools and so I think she just used dowel rods to make sort of faux lags and spin from those. Very cool, very ingenious, well done. So I think what I'm going to try and do is to create a green tweedy yarn. So I'm going to use some of this, like I say this was um, dyeing that kind of came out a lot brighter than I'd originally intended. So let me just lay some of that onto my carding cloth a moment. Okay, so there's a nice little base layer of green on there. And now I think I'm gonna throw in some orange. I've got this little bit of orange combed fiber. So I'm gonna just lay some of that in. And depending on what you're trying to go for, you could also just pinch off little sections, give them a little bit of a roll between your fingers and chuck those in as well. So I'm going to do some of that with the orange. You don't need much to do that, just a tiny, tiny chunk will do the trick. And then that creates a kind of little felted ball. Okay, so I've put some little neps in there as well now. And I'm just gonna throw in a bit of this kind of more purpley sli um, silk saliva. Okay, so that's pretty much that. Then for just a little bit of carding, I don't want to do too much to this because uh, I don't want it to um, go so deeply into the neps that it just tears the neps apart or anything like that. But I just want to get it blended a little bit more than it is at the moment. So even just a couple of passes has done the trick. You may choose not to blend it at all. And then I'm just gonna pop that into a Rolag. And there you go, you've got a nice little Rolag with lots of different bits of texture and stuff going on. So this is gonna be spun woolen, which means that I want fairly light 
tension because I don't want the wheel to be dragging the fibre out of my hands. I want to control when this yarn goes into the orifice. Trying to get the adjustment of the tension right is probably the most tricky thing for me about spinning woolen. I love spinning woolen because it's very, very quick for me. Um, but I do have to make sure that I get the tension right so that I've got something to pull against, but that it's not just kind of ripping the yarn out of my hands. And apologies if this sounds really obvious, but if you're having difficulty with getting your inclusions to actually stay in, then just try to make sure that they go in as the twist enters so that some fibers kind of wrap around the inclusions to keep them in place. Otherwise, you might find that if there's no extra fibres wrapping around them, the inclusion's just going to fall out. So I've just done a little Andean plying bracelet. And I'm just going to ply this yarn together. I would definitely say that tweed is something that probably needs to be plied. I'm not saying that you can't spin it and leave it as a singles but it would probably be happier if you applied it because any of the inclusions will just be that much more firmly fixed into the yarn. If it's not plied then there's a greater possibility that those inclusions are just going to end up escaping at some point. <laughs> Nobody wants escaping inclusions, so I am going to ply this yarn. Um, incidentally, this is also a good opportunity if you do get any situations like this one where I've got an inclusion, a little nep there that is just kind of floating around, I could actually use this as an opportunity to just trap it in between the plies. The other thing you can do is that if it's a fairly long nep, you could actually try and catch it in two places so that it's not just got a ply wrapped around it in one place, but it's actually wrapped around it in two. And that would definitely help to keep it in the yarn. So like here is an example. I can catch it in with one twist there, but I could also then take the end of that inclusion and just trap it in between the next twist that goes in. There we go. That's the end of Tweed Week. And um, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you enjoyed spinning your Tweed yarn. Um, I think quite a few people that I saw on Instagram were saying, oh, I've never really tried this before, but it's definitely something that I would go back to. And I quite agree with them. I really enjoyed working with the, the texture. And of course, I love woolen spinning. So this week worked very, very well for me. Let me know how you got on and I will see you in the next episode. Next week is Thick and Thin Singles. Should be interesting because again that's not something that I generally tend to do a lot of. 
In the meantime, you can find me on Instagram as Tiny Fibre Studio and on Ravelry, I'm Ibex. Hope this was useful and I will see you again soon.